Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinic and review video on gonadal function and we're going to look at the ovaries. Uh, start with ovary development. So if there are no Y chromosomes present or this T-determined factor present, then the ovary is going to be formed during embryonic development. The uh, primordial reproductive cells in a female typically produce solitary gametes, meaning that your um, primordial um, stem cells, your egg stem cells will only ever produce, like will produce one egg at a time. Whereas in the males, um, your the sperm stem cells end up producing four sperm cells. So this is a little bit different here. During the prenatal development, small groups of cells form millions of these primordial follicles, um, each of which consists of a primary oocyte that's surrounded by follicular cells. Okay, so this is during prenatal development as the embryo, you know, in uterus. Early in development, the pri these primary oocytes will begin to undergo meiosis, uh, but the process will halt and will not resume until puberty. Okay, and so meiosis when is when you start having the the copying of the chromosomes, but then the splitting into um, from 46 to 23 chromosomes, and then on eventually into uh, the haploid uh, cell with 23 chromosomes. Only uh, about 400,000 oocytes will remain at puberty when it started out with millions in utero, and only 400 to 500 uh, will be released from the ovary during the reproductive life of a female that's considering average lifespan. So a little bit about ovary anatomy and physiology. So again, they are paired organs with dual functions, just like the testes. Um, they, their function is the gamete or the ovum, ovum production, so producing the eggs, and the steroid hormone production. So for the female, that's going to be mainly estrogen and progesterone. Uh, they are oval shaped uh, and they lie in the pelvic fossa. So in this diagram, your ovaries are right here. Okay, they're positioned near the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube. So that's the little ragged end here with the little fimbriae, little finger like projections. These are the fallopian tubes, or also known as the uterine tubes, right here. This is the uterus, this is the cervix, and of course, this is the vagina. Um, the adult ovary will measure two to five centimeter in length and weighs 14 grams and one egg matures about every 28 days. So let's talk about the hormones that are produced by the ovaries. So estrogen is produced by the ovaries. It promotes breast, uterine, and vaginal development. Uh, estradiol is the primary one uh, produced by the ovaries, but there's also estrone and estriol. Estrone is produced by the adrenals and estriol is produced by the pregnancy. Estradiol being the primary one is the one that's uh, really responsible for the female features and reproductive function of estrogen. Uh, and then estrogen is released early on in the menstrual cycle and it promotes follicular development and eventual, of course, to release the, of the egg later on. Um, progesterone, uh, it induces secretory activity of the endometrial glands. Um, the role of progesterone is to prepare the uterus for pregnancy and to maintain that pregnancy early on. So progesterone tends to be uh, secreted in higher amounts on, in the back half of the menstrual cycle after ovulation has occurred in preparation of possible fertilization and implantation of an embryo. The androgens that are produced um, can help with libido, but in excess, they can lead to hirsutism, which is uh, hair on the face, loss of female characteristics, and the development of male secondary sexual features. Um, androgens are such thing as testosterone and DHEA and all that, and the females do need, a, we need a little bit of testosterone, we just don't need too much. If you have an adequate amount of testosterone, um, then the, your libido will be adequate and high, and um, it, you'll have energy and feel better and feel good. Some of the others for other hormones are inhibits A and B. They inhibit FSH production. Um, activin enhances FSH secretion and induces steroid or genesis. Uh, folliculostatin, relaxin, follicle regulatory protein, oocyte, maturation factor, and meiosis inducing substances are all other hormonal substances that are produced part of this whole reproductive uh, function of the ovaries. 
Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the menstrual cycle. A, um, so a menstrual cycle, we always time it with the first day of menses, the first day of bleeding, uh, mostly because that's kind of like the most obvious start and the easiest day to, it easiest one to track. So day one, the first day of bleeding in a menstrual cycle is day one of the menstrual cycle. Uh, and the cycle consists of two phases of parallel events that occurs in the ovaries and in the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. Um, you have the follicular phase and the luteal phase are the two main phases. So the follicular phase begins at the onset of menses. So when you first start bleeding, follicular phase begins and ends on a day of the LH surge, which would be uh, right before ovulation. So um, what, what follows LH surge is ovulation. Um, the rise in FSH, so follicle is a follicular phase, so follicle stimulating hormone is going to be higher, uh, and it stimulates estrogen production um, by the ovaries, and that um, will induce with the FSH will induce egg maturation during the follicular phase. So that egg matures, matures, matures to once it's completely matured, then it will ovulate, um, and then you have an LH and FSH surge. And, but the LH surge is bigger in, uh, at the end of that follicular phase, and then you have ovulation. And so the luteal phase starts really with ovulation, so the extrusion of the ovum, and that happens about 36 hours after that LH surge. And uh, it ends at the onset of menses, so it ends when day one starts, basically. Uh, in the luteal phase, you produce more progesterone than estrogen, again, to prepare the uterus for implantation. It's called luteals because uh, what's left behind once the uh, follicle has matured, the egg has been released, it, and the ovary turns into the corpus luteum, and the corpus luteum, is, which is yellow, is what produces the progesterone. Um, and so as long as you're in the luteal phase, you'll produce progesterone. Once menses starts, then um, that corpus luteum turns into corpus albicans, which doesn't do anything anymore. Um, and then you get go through another cycle. A typical cycle lasts 28 days, but could be 30. It just kind of depends on the women. So uh, to see a little bit what everything is going on. So we have day one of menses, so bleeding here. Uh, for usually five days to possibly a week. Um, at this time, you can see that uh, the follicle stimulating hormone here uh, is working and uh, you have luteinizing hormone that's going to go up and it's going to peak here at ovulation and we can see uh, estradiol, the main estrogen for reproduction here, levels are climbing, 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 climbing as the follicle here is maturing. Okay, so the, the role of, of estrogen here is to mature this follicle. Um, and your body temperature actually here is going to peak during ovulation and change. And so um, that's something you can track too to see when your body temperature changes and, and spikes, usually you have ovulation. So at this LH surge, you have ovulation, you have release of egg. Now um, the estrogen here, estradiol is also, you see how it climbs here. It also is going to start after bleeding, starts building up that uterine lining. So this is the lining of the uterus. Um, so you have ovulation and it surges, so it goes back down, but then here you see here comes progesterone and progesterone is going to rise above estrogen uh, after ovulation. And so uh, with estrogen, estrogen helps build up your lining and stuff and progesterone is going to help that too and it help uh, fame, could, make a favorable environment for a fertilized egg to implant. Now egg fertilization should occur during the time of ovulation uh, and then it takes a week after ovulation for the egg to travel down the fallopian tube, the fertilized egg to travel down the fallopian tubes and implant. If there is no implantation of the egg into the endometrial lining then um, the body signals that there's no implantation and progesterone and estrogen levels start to drop. Once the drop below a certain level you have bleeding here that starts again and the whole lining here that's been built up is shed back down to the baseline and, and then we're going to build it back up and so again um, this is just an average 28 day cycle but uh, this can vary uh, in females um, and 
could be 30 days uh, or more. So um, let's talk a little bit about the hormonal control of ovulation. So the central control of FSH and LH secretion resides in, in the gonadotropin releasing hormones or GNRH pulse generator of the arcuate nuclei and medial preoptic nuclei of the hypothalamus. So basically the hypothalamus produces GNRH, the GNRH crosses over to the pituitary and causes the pituitary to release um, LH and FSH. Uh, there are positive and negative feedback responses that uh, exist among estrogen, progesterone, and LH and FSH production to have the pattern we just looked at. The mid-cycle surge in LH will stimulate a series, series of events that will culminate in ovulation with FSH levels falling thereafter. And uh, the pubertal development of the female, um, the development of breast tissue happens first. And so that's with uh, the beginning of the cycling to start into producing the estradiol and all of that. So first, they'll develop breasts. Second, they'll be start developing pubic hair. Third, they'll start their menses cycle. And uh, this um, development can be measured by the ten tenor staging system. Sorry. And that is it for normal reproductive function of the female. Thank you.